A Southern California girl befriends three furry aliens after their spaceship lands in her swimming pool. Can she hide them from Dr. Love long enough for them to fix their spaceship? <laughs> Tune in now to Inside Movies on our review for Earth Girls Are Easy. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Inside Movies. Uh, my name is George McHale. I'm a comic book maker, and I am joined by novelist Andrew Buckley, the editor in chief and head writer at Merck Publishing, Murphy, and writer illustrator GMB Kamichuk. Uh, thanks everyone for joining me on this episode of Inside Movies. This week we're talking about uh, Earth Girls Are Easy, and let's get into it. What's the good? What do we like about this one? This is my pick. I'm going to put that right out there. I I love this movie. I think that the the creepy weird nonsensical like dream sequence with like a, like multi-booped alien is just it's just so this is one of those it's so bad that it's good for me personally. Um and the fact that you have Jeff Goldblum, Jim Carrey and Damon Wayans all playing these ridiculous aliens i just think it's so there's how could you not love it how could you not appreciate it it actually feels in the good it feels like a late 90s mtv cartoon that like peter chung would have directed that's how it feels a little bit mm. Not necessarily in a good way, but there are parts of it that are really like bonkers. Also, in the good, we've never seen small aliens get big out of their tiny spaceship. I think that's the first time I've ever seen that in science fiction. So that that's the kind of level we're we're hitting here. Is so, the good, so good, good. Maybe come back to me. <laughs> Uh, so in the good, I have Jim. Uh, I have Jim Carrey. I'm a huge Jim Carrey fan, and uh, yeah, especially in the '90s with like Ace Ventura and The Mask and stuff. That was my jam. I was a kid at that time too, and and so to see him in something I hadn't seen him in before, because this was a first time watch for me for this channel. Um, that was that was kind of a thrill, and he's hamming it up in every scene he's in, uh, and also you know Jeff Goldblum, Damon Wayans, Gina Davis. They're all good. They're all good in this movie. It's just the movie's not very good. So. Well, Gina, Gina Davis, this is the this is the first thing that I ever saw her in. So the whole story behind why I'm like just completely in love with this movie. I was in like eighth grade. I was homesick from work and uh, I turned on, you know, I was just clicking through. I was clicking through TV. And uh, funny enough, I think this was actually playing on MTV. And uh, it was in the scene, which is still one of my favorite scenes, where they're all going around the house, and Jim Carrey is just doing—he's doing this thing, which I never, I'll never forget with the salt shakers, where he's just doing this, he's just walking through, and he's just doing the music, <laughs> and I was so intrigued, and I, I, I finished the whole movie, and then it, it was a double feature, and it just started it over again, and I, I watched the entire movie again. Wait, and, it just uh, played it twice. It what? played it twice, yeah. What? <laughs> And I thought, I thought, I was like, wow, I must have missed so much of this when I really only missed like the first 20 minutes. At how, most. how hopped up on like cough medicine are you that you oh. stick around and watch this one a second time immediately afterwards? Quite, <laughs> quite. I also, I'm, I love, I love weird stuff. You know, I just like weird things. And this is the epitome of that. And to, and to, to nail even further how much this movie is meant to be one of my favorite movies. When I moved into my house in St. Louis, the logo for this movie was drawn onto the door in our basement. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> it, is, it was always a goal of mine to take that door to a con and have Jeff Goldblum sign it and be get the award for bringing the most odd thing to ever get signed at a convention. <laughs> The absolute cartoon silliness of the film. The other side of this movie that I actually really like is watching it and just knowing that the effort of will it would have taken to convince anyone that this movie should be made and then to carry it through to its inevitable conclusion. 
is like astounding. And so many movies like that got made in that era where like you just can't imagine. And they were just giving it a shot. Also, uh, like all the music. There was like music <laughs> video. Because you're a blonde. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm a blonde. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> I don't want to be seen doing it. <laughs> Oh, uh, okay. So in the good, I've got a few more things. I, I thought the costumes were were kind of fun. You know, I I hadn't seen aliens that were furry and like brightly colored before, and and the, you know the spaceship's okay. You know, and I also like that it doesn't overstay its welcome. It's you know it's just over ninety minutes, and it kind of moves at a pretty good speed. Especially the first like half an hour, I was like, what am I watching? But at least I was like kind of like pretty dialed in for the first like half an hour, forty five minutes. So. I think those are positives for sure. This is the first time I'd seen this movie um, as well. And I kind of, thanks so much, Murphy. This has been a real pleasure. Uh, I put it off and put it off and put it off. And I watched it and finished it 10 minutes before we started recording this evening. Um, Nice. So the pain is still fresh. It's really fresh with me. Uh, So I have two things on my good list that I did manage to chalk out. One, the, the effects for the time period, actually not terrible. They're, they're pretty solid. Like, I mean, Especially for a comedy, especially for like the budget this thing had, it was only ten million dollars. They only made four, so that gives you. Oh, a, oh gosh! And, and, and then it also put the studio on the road to bankruptcy, which it, it did actually claim four years later. Anyways, beside the point. Sure, it's a great movie in some people's eyes. Um, Gina Davis, <laughs> uh, super hot, like she, she's absolutely gorgeous. And then also Jeff Goldblum. Also super hot. When okay, he yeah. That thing with the steam thing, I questioned my sex- sexuality for a few minutes. It was it's, it's young Jeff Goldblum was smoking uh, for sure. So, young so Jim most- Carrey and Marlon Wayans were also smoking. I was Damon surprised Wayans. that like Damon, Damon Wayans. Wayans. God damn it! How did you just now? Can can we fix Damon Wayans? You put that over every time I said Marlon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was surprised how much I was into Jim Carrey, like surfer dude. <laughs> uh, you know what else is gonna make you a question your sexuality is death rage murphy why don't you tell us about it Ooh, my man death rage is is a hottie uh we have uh from merc publishing death rage number one with added pages we have six added story pages uh in the comic uh, it's coming to your local comic shop um street date is in july uh, so it's coming very soon. Go pre-order it at your local comic shop. We want to support them. And I'm so excited to see how you guys feel about the new pages that we have for you. Okay. So on the good, I like to imagine a shared multiverse of all the movies that I've seen. And so in that, I'd like to imagine that Jim Carrey comes back to Earth or goes to another planet at some point. And this was actually like the proto Grinch character. Right. This is where that comes from. And him in that weird hair all over his body. That's why. And also that Gina Davis in the long kiss. Good night. The baby she's carrying is actually Jeff Goldblum's from this movie. I'd like to let's get into the bad. What do we not like about earth girls are easy. Uh, this is a stupid nitpick for a movie that is so like gonzo, but they are specifically different bright colors. And then when they're shaved, the hair they have left isn't that color. <laughs> that pisses me off, right? That pisses me off. Like, I can buy the, the silliness of, like, they, my faces must have been covered in hair, and they cleared that all off, and that's now it's beautiful Jeff Goldblum underneath. But his hair well, you, still be the right You didn't color. like, oh, my God, you're, like, totally black. <laughs> Oh my god! Yeah, that oh, I. Oh, good lord! Yeah. I was avoiding commenting on that. Oh, I don't want to lay into it super hard, but do it, do it George. Think about it. think about how mean that I've been about cliffhanger, cliffhanger. and and yeah. Rambo. <sighs> um, I found it a little meandering. It's like, I, like <laughs> I said, it was it was at a pretty good pace the first half an hour or so, and then like they get to like a dance club or something like that, and he has a dance off, and it takes like. For six free. minutes. It's six minutes, George. It's a six minute dance off. Yeah, it's fucking like... nuts. I was like, "Are you shitting me? This is going on, still going on. How is it still going on?" I'm okay. I'm okay. And <laughs> then, like, they get arrested, and they go to the beach, and then there's a song about like girls just want to have fun or what, or blondes yeah, have more fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> That's another thing. Is the songs like they're? I appreciate the effort, but they're not really super memorable. To I, me. so. I I did. Uh, I actually did another show about this movie uh, a few years ago, and um, me is like they would bring in they would bring in guests, and you would kind of like give them, um, you know, like 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 trivia questions, and so one of mine was, how many musical numbers do you think are in this movie? And they were like, is it a musical? I'm like, no. <laughs> There's just musical numbers because it's not a musical. I I really don't know why the songs are included. And I can tell you, I didn't like them at first, but I have become so obsessed with this movie that now I just find them so silly. And This is a legitimate question that is only, like, it's only occurring to me in this moment right now. Was this movie intended... I don't know where it fits in the like filmography or the chrono chronology how it fits chronologically. Was it trying to capture the same audience as Rocky Horror Picture Show by having like weird, avert, like strange sexual situations that would be funny to make fun of on a like and then sing along? Like what was happening? It I definitely seems like it. I mean, I'll be honest, I I don't like I said, I only know about this movie because I just like sickly sickly happened upon it and then it's just become one of my favorite bad movies i don't really like know a lot of the back and and, and looking now at oh my god there's a stage show so of course there is no it doesn't <laughs> uh the rocky horror picture show comparison makes total sense i watched this with my wife uh for the view here and she loves Rocky Horror Picture Show, and I've watched that stupid movie like probably ten times, and I've seen it on stage and in theaters and over and over again. And she loves it, and I'm like, why don't, you, why haven't you seen this before? This seems like right up your alley. And she's like, I just hadn't heard of this one, and she's like, I don't really like it. <laughs> like I kind of feel the same way about Rocky Horror Picture Show. Um, I think another big problem for me with this one is it's a comedy. And it's not really funny. Like it's you know, I, I think yes. I might have had like yes. a chuckle yeah. or something. No, that's right. I have I mean I have issues with comedies in general. Like I hate stuff that goes for low hanging fruit. Although I'll I'll happily watch some stupid shit like Caddyshack. But there's there's legitimate funny scenes in that movie. There just nothing funny happened in this movie. It was annoying. The joke was fucking nuts. <laughs> Can we review Caddyshack? Because I just want to talk about the scene where he like caddies for the Dalai Lama. Oh, <laughs> I think we need more Stallone and Schwarzenegger in this on this channel. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I think this uh, channel uh, this channel need... could be called Inside Stallone. And, and... <laughs> ew, ew, no! What the fuck? No. <laughs> okay, around <laughs> Stallone. George might have imagined. There's a lot that of scenario, Stallone, whatever. like just on the rim. You mean Murphy? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Around the rim of Stallone? I don't think that's a good way to go with this. <laughs> He's gonna have us killed. <laughs> <laughs> but George will be okay. He'll be safe. Yeah, George will mm -hmm. make it out okay. Mm -hmm. but... Does anyone have any more bad that they want to say about um, Earth Girls Are Easy? Yeah, There's no I wrote sequel. A note. There's, There's no sequel. sequel. <laughs> you want to say that? <laughs> There's no sequel. But there was no sequel. There is a sequel. It's called The Fly. Uh, yeah, I thought about that. Too. So that your eyes light up. <laughs> like, oh my god, there's a sequel. What? <laughs> we should Gina do The Davis. Fly, honestly. That's a weird-ass movie. Gina, anything with Gina Davis. Yeah. Well, and so Gina Davis and Jeff Goldblum were married, as I understand it. Uh, they met on The Fly, I think, and then they were married. Wait, is that true? I don't know enough about my Gina Davis trivia. It is my true. Jeff, and true. they kept making out on this movie and drove the director nuts because they would make out up until he yelled action. And he got so pissed off because he thought they, were, he, they weren't taking this movie seriously. <laughs> uh, all right, let's get into the skinny. What's our final grades for um, Earth Girls Are Easy? Half a stupid hairy alien out of 23. I, I don't That's low. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say about this movie. What I will say uh, as a final grade is I will give it um, uh, one out of three enlarged aliens in a spaceship in your swimming pool. 
if that one enlarged alien is Jeff Goldblum, that could be pretty good, though. So, you know, it's hard to know. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go C- minus on this one. I I actually didn't mind it for, like, the first half an hour. So, you know, I, I, th- I thought it had some redeeming qualities to it. Uh, yeah, I actually think if it had more musical numbers and they were just a little bit more memorable, this would be more of a cult classic, I think, than it is. I am very surprised. I I don't think anyone else has ever watched this movie and thought, you know what it needs is more musical numbers. <laughs> that is a weird. I agree. I, with am... them. I agree. With them. <laughs> if it, so if it was a full on musical, do you yeah. think that's what it's missing? Oh, yeah. It needed to just of, be yeah, lean into aliens. the ridiculousness. Yeah, three out of three aliens, if that's uh I'm gonna give it 90 incredible alien spins on your toes while on a dance floor out of a hundred because I love this movie and I will always love this movie. <laughs> uh, all right. That's going to do it for another episode of inside movies. Uh, Death rage is coming to a local, local comic book store near you. So ask them to bring it in for you and, uh, and add it to your uh, pull list. If you're, if you're a regular at comic book stores, um, I've been George McHale joined by Murphy GMB Kamichuk and Andrew Buckley. Uh, follow us along uh, on our Facebooks, our Instagram, our Twitters. Links to all those in the description of this video. Until next time, peace.